Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So today we're going to be looking at a dream scenario for the Democratic Party. And when I say dream scenario, I mean it literally. This scenario is probably not going to happen. I mean, it's probably in the less than 1% category. But again, anything is truly possible at this point in time. I'm pretty sure that everything leading up into the 2018 midterm elections have taught you that. And it isn't really that good for uh, the Democratic Party looking at this map itself, just based off numbers alone. I'm starting to... Uh, look at arguments that were made purely off the 2016 presidential election in terms of other political YouTubers that do exactly what I do, and they really don't make sense, to be completely honest with you. A lot of the arguments that people try to make in flipping states like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan is that Trump won here in 2016. So I'm going to give you the exact opposite of that, and I'm also going to make a video in terms of the best dream scenario for the GOP. So it won't be a realistic scenario, thus the word dream. So it'll be something that definitely would be beneficial to the Democrats, but also still staying within that sort of realistic view. But uh, certain states that didn't flip in my best case scenario for the Democrats video are probably going to flip, mainly because of the fact that this is going to be, again, a dream scenario and not everything would have to work right. I mean, there would still have to be a lot more going into it than just everything working out for the Democrats. So with this many days away from the general election, it can be very hard for the uh, Democratic Party to actually attain something like this. Um, but again, anything is truly possible if uh, anything has taught you in the recent uh, political stage the past couple of years. Because years ago, you would have laughed at Donald Trump be becoming president. And then looking at this map itself, even back in 2016, you would have laughed at the Democrats having the possibility of taking the Senate majority. So, yes, that is sort of just a laughable thing now, considering they have a 20% chance of doing it. But also Donald Trump had a 33% chance of taking back the presidency for the GOP. So keep that in mind when we look at this map. Uh, but right now, again, this is a complete dream scenario. It'll be in the title. I do not want this to be confused with a prediction or a possible outcome that I think could happen. Um, when I do say that it is very narrowly possible, again, I mean less than 1%. When I say real, when I mean, you know what I mean by really possible, like 15, 20%, possibly even 50%. But when looking at a map like this, you're probably going to be a little surprised at some of the states. And we are going to do it by margins. So we're going to start off with all the states that are currently rated as safe for the Democratic Party that are pretty much going to be safe in 2018, uh, regardless of the outcome of the races. But again, this is going to be a dream scenario for the Democratic Party. So certain states are probably going to be a little bit more left-leaning than they were before. 36 Democrats. Uh, and again, in a dream scenario, New Mexico and Virginia would be safe. I mean, they do have possibilities of going safe in this election. So definitely could say something about the elections there in terms of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Those are three states that Donald Trump won in 2016. So again, I've seen arguments saying that those states will somehow go to the GOP because Trump won there. But again, when we're looking at those states, number one, they aren't approving the president the way that they should be if they want to have any chance at taking back those states in the Senate. The GOP is not focusing on them for good reason. All three of those states show the Democrats ahead in polling data, and Michigan and Pennsylvania both show their candidates ahead by over 15%, which means that these races probably are going to move into the safe column by the end of 2018, and Wisconsin isn't a major target. In fact, the governor's race is probably more of a target for the GOP, even though they have a GOP incumbent. But keep in mind, someone like Scott Walker going for a third term, a lot of the GOP money is going to be spent on other states. This Senate race is very minuscule for the GOP. If this was a Hillary Clinton presidency, yes, they would focus on states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania because they would not have to worry about states like Indiana, Missouri, and North Dakota. This would be expected to go to the GOP even with Democratic incumbents because of a Democratic presidency. Now that we're looking at a Republican presidency, the landscape has changed. They focus their attention away from the Rust Belt, appealing to white working class voters because it's not a presidential election year and they already know that they probably would lose it regardless of who was president. Um, or it would take a lot more work if Hillary Clinton, uh, sorry, if Donald Trump was, I mean, he is president, so it would take a lot more work to actually flip those states from blue to red. But they can do a lot less work in states like Missouri, in North Dakota, in Montana, in Indiana, already Republican states that do have possibilities of going red, just they aren't really capitalized on as much as they should be. So I'm looking at this map right now. Those states are going to move into the safe column for the Democratic Party in terms of another safe state. In fact, I would move over Ohio from likely to safe. And the reason behind that is right now in Ohio, Sherrod Brown is actually leading larger than Casey in Pennsylvania, around the same as Stabenow in Michigan. OK, a little less than Klobuchar in Minnesota, but overall, Ohio, which was a state that Donald Trump won by around 10 percent. I mean, if you round up two percentage points, um, but still being near that as a swing state that went for a Democrat by a couple points before and then all of a sudden to Trump by nearing double digits definitely says a lot when it swings all the way back to a Democratic candidate, possibly by 15 to 20 points. The GOP definitely was focusing on this race back in early 2017 and leading into 2017 until Josh Mandel dropped out of the race due to his wife's health. 
and uh, that was a huge blow to them because that mean that that made that race no longer contested for the uh, Democratic Party. That was a race that they knew they were going to hold on to, and the Democratic Party knew the GOP was going to give it up, and they were right. So right now with 42 Democrats and 42 Republicans, we can look at some other states how we can move into the likely column. So if we're talking about a dream scenario for the Democrats, Minnesota special election still goes into the likely column along with Montana. In fact, actually, I'll make Minnesota special election just a safe state because, again, dream scenario. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of uh, unrealistic numbers here, mainly because even if it was a dream scenario, you know, Klobuchar would lead uh, Tina Smith over the finish line there by a safe margin. Um, but Montana probably isn't going to move into safe safe into the safe column uh looking at a number of these other states west virginia probably would stay in the safe column for the democratic party that puts the democrats at 45 seats the republicans at 42 seats Let's see if we can figure out any more again in a dream scenario for the democratic party arizona would probably move into the likely column right now it's in the leaning column so you could say that that race right now could move narrowly into the likely column in a dream scenario which is a pretty good argument. In the state of Indiana, right now, Mike Braun has le led in previous polling data. Um, but right now, those races could actually move into the likely column just based off the data itself. Uh, we go over to Wyoming. If Gary Troner can do what he did in 2008, then I guess you could move Wyoming into the likely GOP column, but it's still probably going to remain in the GOP column. As for Utah, Mitt Romney's lead has gone down 10%, but still, it would fi probably finish off in the likely column if we were talking about uh, the Democratic Party's dream scenario. As for uh, Mississippi, that one could also move into the likely column for the GOP in their overall at-large race. But in terms of the states that possibly could go to the Democratic Party, states like Florida could move into the likely. States like Nevada would probably stay in lean along with North Dakota, which could possibly stay in lean for how you hike in, which puts the Democrats at 50 seats. Now overlooking some other races, Missouri probably would move from leaning to likely for uh, the Democratic Party, and the reasoning behind that is they would probably have to capitalize on what they did in 2012, even though candidates were a lot worse for the GOP back then. Again, just looking at the numbers itself, uh, Heidi Heitkamp in North Dakota possibly could move over that margin from plus 12 all the way over, maybe into lean, but also he led by plus 4 in the beginning poll, so it could narrow down to that type of margin. Over in Missouri, though, it's plus 3 for Josh Hawley, so it makes a lot more sense that it could move over into the likely column, but Nevada, we're actually starting to see Dean Heller lead in some polls, and he is the incumbent, so the difference here is between Missouri and Nevada is the fact that there's a Republican incumbent in a Democratic state, whereas Missouri is a Democratic incumbent in a Republican state. So pretty much the things have flipped, although Nevada, I think, just could have the factor of the incumbency, could move it um, from likely to leaning, moving it down just a tad bit, thinking it could cap off at 5% for uh, Jackie Rosen for the Democrats there. Over in Texas, though, that and Tennessee could move into the leaning Democratic column. Now, that would seem crazy looking at the map right now because of the fact that the Democrats aren't really leading in these states. In terms of fundraising, they aren't doing necessarily the best as they could. But when we're looking at these races, again, anything is truly possible at this point in time. We currently have 45 Republicans right now and 53 Democrats and looking at a lot more blue than what we see here. Okay, definitely a lot more blue on that map right now. And then we're looking at some of these more contested races. Again, the Rust Belt, an area that Trump won in along with Ohio. Those are areas where uh, typically you would expect Republicans to do better in because of Trump. That's not the case. Here you're looking at areas like New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, states that were swing states in 2016, and Texas. Not the case. Democratic victories here. Again, I'm not saying this is likely or going to happen. I'm just saying that the Democrats' dream scenario would possibly play out something like this. Everything would have to be working in their favor and then 110% add on on top of it because this is probably not making the cut just based off everything working for the Democrats because, again, there would have to be a number of things to happen in a number of these individual states because it isn't just some presidential election where there's one candidate on every single ballot. Okay, it may seem like that in terms of the president, but these Senate elections are definitely important in terms of the candidates themselves because it was, it was purely based off president support and party affiliation. The Republicans would probably take the majority. And we're going to discuss that in a separate video talking the Republicans' dream scenario. But right now, Democrats have 53, Republicans have 45. Now, in terms of the states that possibly could go into the tilt to Democratic column, Mississippi and Nebraska. Now, the reason why Nebraska may seem surprising, again, dream scenario, keep that in mind when you're thinking about this. Deb Fisher is expected to win there by 10% in this election. So if everything is working in favor of the Democrats, they could narrowly win there right now. When we're looking at the uh, candidates here, Jane Raybould is maybe not the best candidate the Democrats have could, could put up, but that Republican incumbent isn't necessarily the most popular either. When looking at the state itself, it seems like, yes, it would be a Republican state, presidential election, solid GOP state, but they approve of the president by 4%. The second district is likely to go to the Democrats if they play their cards right. And then looking at the Senate race, a 10% margin in a Democratic wave year, sure. 
You could argue that it's a Democratic wave here, but this is Nebraska. This is as Republican as a state as you can get. It's right next to Wyoming, one of the most conservative states next to South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas. Okay, these are states that all voted for Trump in 2016. The only exception is really Colorado, and even on that side of Nebraska, it's pretty solid for the GOP. So that's not really the best argument you could make. Right now, when looking at the state, it could be just be the fact that the Republican incumbent is not as popular as you might think, and also could be that the Democratic candidate is a little bit better than I think. So again, looking at that state itself, it's a very narrow possibility of going to the Democrats in the Democrats' dream scenario, which is, again, why it's titled dream scenario. As for Mississippi, just everything would have to go right, and then the Democrat would just have to gain a number of Republican voters that may be disenfranchised by this new Republican candidate that wins with a plurality um, in, the, in the first round and then go on, going off into a runoff. But that Democratic candidate probably isn't going to do the best. So as you look on this map, we have 55 Democrats and 45 Republicans. Uh, obviously, again, the dream scenario. But looking a lot more blue on that map than what we saw before. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all tomorrow.